Number 15 then from the 2016 Advanced Tire Mathematics of Mechanics. The first of the big marks here. 11 marks for this question. Now what does it say? A mass of a quarter of a kilogram is attached to a horizontal spring of natural length 1 metre and a modulus of elasticity 20 newtons. The spring is stretched and then released. So presumably the mass would be there, but it's stretched to here. But it's stretched by x, I presume, because it's using x as that displacement. And its natural length is one metre, and that's a quarter of a kilogram. It's then released, so, so far the only force acting on it is the restoring force of the spring. And of course that restoring force is equal to the extension, x over the original length, multiplied by that modulus, whichever letter you care to use for that, lambda. We'll probably note that, that's the spring. However, there's another force. It must be resting on a surface, so there's a frictional force which opposes the motion and is velocity dependent. So it's also a force of friction, which is equal to 6V, it says in this case. And then for two marks, you have to show that the subsequent motion of this is governed by this second order differential equation. Well, so what is the net force acting in that? Now, distances matter here. X is measured in that direction, but upon release, the force and the velocity will be acting to the left. So you have to decide in the direction first of all. So maybe we'll take this, we'll not use that, we'll say this instead, we'll say, we'll take this. The net force is to the left. So that means the force is to the left, the velocity is to the left, but x is to the right, so that'll be negative. So what would the net force be? Well, the net force will be the force of the spring minus the force of friction. Now, the net force will provide the acceleration, so F equals MA. So MA will be, now the force of the spring is X upon L, but X would be negative taking the directions we're taking the force in. So that will be negative X over L multiplied by the modulus. The force of friction is given by 6V. Now, V is to the left, so that part will be positive. Then, the acceleration is the second derivative of the displacement. The modulus it said was, didn't take a note of that, the modulus was 20. So minus 20 times x, the length was just 1, minus 6 times, and the velocity is the first derivative, whoops, of the displacement dx by dt. One thing I didn't put in, of course, was the mass and the mass is a quarter. So multiply through it by four and bring it over. So second derivative of x equals, bring that one next, that first derivative, but four times that is 24. So that'll be plus 24 dx by dt. And bring that over as a plus, but four times that is 80x equals zero. So I think the marks went, the first mark was there, and then the second mark was forgetting this bit because that rearranged directly into the thing you were told in the first place. Now, part B for six marks. It says, solve this second order differential equation given this initial condition. It's released from rest with an extension of 0.2 metres. Well, first of all, this part here. So. That's just a homogeneous second order differential equation because there's no term in this that doesn't involve that dependent variable x. So there's nothing over here that's just t's on its own. So the auxiliary equation will do just to find this solution. So auxiliary equation would be, when you use m, that'd be m squared plus 24m plus 80 equals 0. Now, but that just comes from assuming that an, a solution exists of the form of e to the mt. So when you go through the derivatives, 
you've got E to the MT will still be a common factor and then the rest of it will just be full of these M's. Well, that factorises readily, luckily, because 4 20s are 80 and that's 4 and 20. So M plus 4, M plus 20, which means M is negative 4 or M is negative 20. Well, that's two marks so far. You're getting one mark for forming the auxiliary equation and you're getting one mark for solving it. So in this case, the general solution, because that's all that exists there, just this homogeneous equation. So the general solution is just made up of that one part, the complementary function, and that would be y is equal to, remember they're all with this form here, a linear combination of the two of these, one with a negative 4 and one with a negative 20. So it's a lots of e to the negative 4t, then it's not a y, it's an x, plus some lot, other lot of e to the negative 20t. And you get a mark for the general solution. Now you use the initial conditions. Notice there's two sets of initial condition here. Released means that time is zero. Rest means the velocity is zero. And extension means x is that. So I've got two things. At time zero, x is 0 0.2. Or will I call it a fifth? Not sure which. So 0 0.2 is equal to a times e to the, and that'll just be 0, plus b times e, and that's a 0, that'll just be 0, which simply says e to the 0 is 1, a plus b is 0 0.2. There's one equation. Now the next one is, at t equals 0, it was at rest. That means dx by dt, the velocity is 0. So I'll need to differentiate this. So dx by dt will be, differentiating this term, it will remain e to the negative 4t, but that's a function of a function, multiplying by the derivative of the inner function is negative 4, negative 4a. That will remain as e to the negative 20t, but it's a function of a function. Multiplying by the inner derivative, which is a negative 20, gives you this. Now I can put this in. The velocity is 0. When t is 0, so that's negative 4a, and that'll just be 0. And that'll be negative 20b, but that'll be 0. So that gives me <coughs> negative 4a minus 20b is equal to 0. But I think I'll just tidy that up by dividing it by 4 and flipping it over the other side. So it says a plus 5b equals 0. There's another equation. Now you're getting a mark for these two here. So it's five so far, so the last mark will just be for finding a and b, because all you're doing is solving those simultaneous equations. So, since the a's are the same, if I did two take away one, if I do two, two minus one, I'll have a take away a disappears. Five b take away b is four b, and zero take away point two is negative zero point two, so b is negative zero point zero five. If, then, if you then put that into number 1, you've got a minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.2, which means a is equal to 2 point, no it's not, 0 0.25. I've not got a mark yet. You've got a mark when you put that together. So that means the final equation is x equals a, I think I'll write that as a quarter though, a quarter of, but you can leave it as 0.25, e to the negative 4t, and notice that's negative a twentieth of e to the negative 20t. So there it is. There's the six marks. So those first two parts were okay for eight marks. This last part and there's just a bit of arithmetic it looks like. Show that the acceleration is zero when t is this and find the displacement at that time. Well, actually, you could do it two ways. You could get the expression for the acceleration, so I'll need to dif differentiate this twice. You could either put t equals to that into it and show the answer zero, or you could solve the equation equal to zero. But to find the displacement at that time, that's just a straight substitution you're putting. t equals... I'll just take a note of it over here. 1 16th of ln of 5. If you put that into there, you'll get the displacement. There's only three marks for all of this. Well, the first thing is I'll need the acceleration. So that means I'll 
need to differentiate this twice. Maybe I'll just use the dot notation here. So the first time round it'll be negative 4 times that, so it's just negative e to the negative 4t. And that'll just be plus e to the negative 20t. Then the second time around to get the acceleration multiplying, that'll be 4e to the negative 4t. And that'll be, whoops, negative 20e to the negative 20t. So you can either answer this question by putting this value into this and showing that the answer is zero, because it doesn't say by solving, it just says show the acceleration is zero at that. So you could do that. In fact, you would need to tidy up. You could just press the buttons in your calculator, I think. But I think I'll do it this way. A equals zero means that that thing equals zero. 4e to the negative 4t minus 20e to the negative 20t equals zero. Now, factorise it. 4 comes out and e must come out. I'll take out e to the negative 4t. So obviously that's 1 minus. 4 times 5 makes this. Now, what's the balance to make a negative 20. And when you're multiplying terms, you add them. So I still need a negative 16t. And that gives me two solutions. That means either e to the negative 4t equals zero. That never happens. The exponential graph, no matter which one you're using, never touches the x-axis. It never equals zero. So that doesn't happen. I'll put e to the negative 4t cannot equal zero. Or, this one here, e to the negative 16t equals, and that'll be a fifth. So that must be the one. Now, just solve that. So, negative inverse of the exponential is the logarithm. That's log of a fifth. Take that across and divide. So you've got negative a sixteenth of it, ln a fifth. But then you can pop the negative into that as power negative one, which means that you've got one sixteenth of ln five. It's an awful lot of work. There's only three marks for this. So there's one mark for differentiating it. Then there's one mark for proving it. So all that was just worth the one mark, which presumably you could get just by putting that into that expression and showing you get a zero. Maybe you could put a wee note to the side here. Negative ln a fifth is ln of a fifth to the negative one, which is ln five. For the second part, what's the value of x? You just pop it in e to the negative 4, now it's 4 over that, so it'll be 4 over 16 ln 5 minus 1 over 20 e to the negative 20 upon 16 ln 5. Now there's only one mark for this part, so you could just press those buttons in your calculator, or you could try and tidy it up a bit because you know that e to the ln will just give whatever it's operating on since it's an inverse of each other and I would just have to pop that in as a power if that would save some button pressing I don't know so that would be a quarter of now popping that inside e to the ln would just leave a quarter of 5 to the power and that cancels to a quarter negative a quarter minus a twentieth of e and if I pop that in as a power which would be 5 upon 4 I'll just end up with I'm going to I'll just end up with 5 to the power 5 upon 4. Oh, and of course, I mean negative there. Taking that inside makes it power negative 20 upon 16, which is negative 5 upon 4, then ELN disappears. And if you pop that in, you get 0 0.16049 and so on. So that's 0 0.160 metres. But you could just have typed that in to begin with. And that's the last mark out of the 11.